All right. So tensinogen is now found in the blood, and it travels to. I guess it should be smaller in relationship to the size, but it travels to the kidney. From the kidney, we get the enzyme renin. Not a hormone, okay? So sometimes read incorrectly that it's a hormone. It's not. It's an enzyme that works on angiotensinogen and converts it partially to a molecule known as angiotensin 1. Now angiotensin 1 is partially active, okay? It will cause vasoconstriction to some degree, but it's not nearly as effective as angiotensin 2. So it's also in the blood. This conversion occurs with renin interacting with the angiotensin, angiotensinogen. Is that going to happen in the glomerular capillaries? Yeah, because we still have proteins in the glomerular capillaries. But angiotensinogen and renin are not going to be found in the glomerular, I mean, it's going to be found in the afferent tube, not in the capillaries. Sorry again. Not in the filtrate because angiotensinogen and renin are proteins, and while they flow through the glomerular capillaries, they will not be filtered, so we will not see them in the filtrate. We will not see them in the proximal convoluted tubule or in the nephron loop, they're too big. So they'll flow through the capillaries into the ethereal arterial and into the um, peritubular capillaries, all right, and get converted to angiotensin one. And then, we're not done yet, As the blood flow is passing through the pulmonary capillaries, the lungs, of all things, actually add another enzyme. Called angiotensin converting enzyme. And that's going to take angiotensin 1, and big surprise, convert it to <coughs> angiotensin 2. And that's the prize. Okay? That's the one that's going to have the most effect. It's going to have three or four major effects through different mechanisms. Vasoconstriction, okay? All by itself, as well as increasing the sympathetic nerves, uh, nervous system to release norepinephrine. So it's going to increase systemic vasoconstriction by itself binding to smooth muscle cells of arterioles and by causing the sympathetic nervous system to increase norepinephrine, which is going to increase blood vessel constriction. That in itself is going to do what to blood pressure? It's going to increase peripheral resistance throughout the body and blood pressure is going to go up. Okay? Then the second major thing it's going to do is increase water reabsorption. And it does this three different ways. It's going to increase, can I raise that board? I'm running out of space and I don't want this to be too tight. Do you guys have this thing? Okay, I'm gonna put it over here. So it's going to increase water reabsorption by alone, meaning it's going to bind to
increase sodium reabsorption, which then is going to increase water reabsorption, right? Because water goes where sodium goes. That's without hormones. That's what I mean by a low. Okay? So the angiotensin 2 will do that. Then it increases aldosterone. Release. Anybody remember the endocrine organ that makes aldosterone? Adrenal glands. And this increases sodium reabsorption. from the distal convoluted tubules. That's where the hormonal change in sodium. Remember, proximal is not regulated by hormones, but distal convoluted tubule is. Followed by, and what's the other hormone that affects increases water reabsorption at the collecting ducts? So we talked about the cardiovascular. ADH. ADH. And water channels, known as aquaporins. In the collecting duct. And an increase in water reabsorption without an increase in sodium. That's the difference between this and aldosterone. from vasoconstriction and water reabsorption, we increase blood pressure. That increase of blood pressure is translated back to the capsular hydrostatic pressure as there's an increase in the pressure of blood coming through the afferent arteries. Okay? So we talked about the effect of ADH and aldosterone with our vascular, cardiovascular system, but we haven't talked about how they were released, and that was due to Renin being released to do this activity here. Okay. All right. Again, an hour and a half, and we finally got through filtration. All right. So, why don't you guys come back at 7 20? Or actually, anytime. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the quiz so you guys can use this time to study. Let me know anytime between um, now and eight or so uh, when you want to take the quiz okay no histology on this quiz just structures of the um, blood vessels the sinuses the well not the sinuses the minor calyces and pelvis um, one um, thing to note what i talked about at the beginning is on the quiz so i want you to be able to identify the macula densa and the podocytes, not from the electron microscope, but from this image here, okay? So this is the macula densa of the straight tubule. Here's the afferent and afferent, oh, and the granular cells in the afferent arterial. And then these are the podocytes covering the glomerular capillaries, okay? So that in addition to what we talked about on Wednesday last week. Alrighty, so, um, I'm going to get, the urinalysis lab doesn't take very long. I think Thursday night was all of 10 minutes. Um, but I'm going to set up while you are doing that, and then we're going to, before we do it, though, I, I still need to talk about some stuff about how the urine is made, but I'll just be setting up some of the equipment out there. So let me know when you're ready. Not outside, but on the counters over there. Let me know when you're ready to take the quiz, and we'll get that out of the way before we get more discussion under our belt. Okay. Go to the bathroom if you want to.